Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Paul, otherwise known here on YouTube as Optobotomus, and everybody's doing it. So I figured I might as well also. Uh, I am doing my uh, reaction, discussion, um, review, video, whatever you want to call it, of obviously Infinity War. Uh, also, everybody else is doing this, so I'll do it as well. I got the Infinity Gauntlet here, and I gotta say, an addendum to the review of this, um, well, first I should say, uh, if you're watching this video and you haven't seen the movie yet, stop watching this video. Just stop watching entirely. This is going to be a full-on spoiler video. I'm not going to hold back anything. Uh, I personally feel that if you say you like or dislike a movie, that in itself is a spoiler. So I'm not going to load this up with uh, a whole bunch of other stuff that says, you know, this was this and this was this. Because when you give your opinion on anything like that, I feel like that's putting out a, uh, a notion of what the movie is or... Uh, I gotta make sure that this is staying in there my ear hopefully this is recording um you put out a notion of what you you know you you thought of the movie and it creates an expectation in your mind so if you say you liked it then people are gonna be like oh he liked it he went and saw it he, he must like it so it must mean it's a good movie or i didn't like it you know oh, it must mean that the movie sucks so this is your warning i'm spoiling it so if you haven't watched it, stop watching this video. Go watch the movie. Come back and you can join the discussion. So that being said, my addendum to this is that I'm... It doesn't let me snap my fingers. I can't... You go like this. I, I can't bring these fingers together to snap them. And the other thing that I kind of wish... Uh, is that you could push these, now that I've seen the movie, I wish that I could push these and have individual ones light up instead of all of them lighting up. If you, you go like this, you know, it's cool to have it be all lit up. But I wish you could have just like push these in and have just one light up. That's, that's just my uh, brief addendum to the movie uh, or to, to the review of this. So... Infinity War. Congratulations. Today is, uh, as of the recording of this, it is uh, Sunday after or evening, basically. It's about 7 o'clock almost. Um, and the movie, ha they have just announced basically that at $250 million domestically, it has become the highest grossing opening for a movie ever. Uh, beating, I think it was... The Force Awakens, which was a hundred or two hundred forty-eight million, and globally, uh, or worldwide, I should say, uh, it has now become the highest-grossing opening worldwide, uh, which is amazing to me. So, congratulations to the folks over at Marvel for doing an amazing job on that. Let's start off first again. Spoilers. Uh, one thing that I I have been with this i mean a lot of us have been with this marvel cinematic universe from the very beginning iron man started it all off almost 10 years ago and it, 10 years ago who would have thought that it would have uh become a, a 19 movie franchise uh a movie event these these are movie events when these marvel movies come out they're events uh and it's amazing to me and here we are now, 10 years later, 19 movies in. And in my humble opinion, this movie has lived up to every expectation that I put into uh, my hopes and dreams for this movie. It is amazing to me what they were able to accomplish with it. Uh, from the very beginning of the film there was a tone there was a seriousness to this movie that this is going to be epic 
Uh, and by that I mean before even the introduction, the the Infinity War trailer, before that even shows up, uh, Heimdall is killed, Loki is killed, and we think uh, Thor is killed. Now, we've... now. In, in terms of trailers and things like that, we knew that Thor really wasn't going to die. Um, Heimdall and Loki dying blew my mind. There were so many times in this movie that I was like... And even after the movie, my face was like... Now... I, I, it's not a secret that uh, months ago when these tickets went on sale, I bought three showings. I saw the special fan event show, which was at 6 o'clock p.m., uh, well, Pacific time, on Thursday. And then I went again at 11 p.m. that night. And then I went the next day at 10.30 p.m. So I saw it three times in less than a 24-hour period. Uh, and I, I remember when I got to, I'm like, I really hope this movie is good. Otherwise I'm going to be screwed for the longest time. Uh, and after the first five minutes, I was like, and I knew that this was going to be something that was going to be special. Um, uh, in addition to, in addition to that, we saw a, a very influential scene that had repercussions throughout the remainder of the movie that really did display the power of Thanos while only having one stone, the power stone. And he didn't even really use it that much. Uh, he beat to a pulp the Incredible Hulk, uh, who there's always been the playful back and forth. Who is the strongest Avenger? Is it Thor? Is it Hulk? Um, Thor is laying there broken and defeated at the hands of Thanos. Uh, Hulk is there broken and defeated at the hands of Thanos. So it absolutely shows that the mightiest of the Avengers did not even really stand much of a chance against him. And that was when he only had one of the stones. And honestly, he didn't even use this to be like Hulk. Now, we don't know. Uh, it's later said uh, by Hulk that uh, he decimated Xandar, uh, which was the place where the Power Stone was being held and protected. Uh, he basically decimated it, and he took it. Now, we never saw that in the movie, and that's a little bit unfortunate. I wish there was a bit of a, a backstory or a scene or something like that to kind of show that. Ultimately, I don't think we needed to see it. it you're, you're looking at like a two and a half hour long movie that you could have had that in there that probably could have pushed it to, you know, two hours in 40 minutes, two hours in 45 minutes. Would that have bloated the movie? I don't know. It was already a fairly long movie and a lot of people were already kind of complaining about the length on it. Uh, ahead of time thinking that it was going to be a long movie. Uh, it was a long movie. But I feel like they did a really good job uh, with using the time that they had. I remember initially thinking, how is this going to play out with so many characters? We have the Avengers. We have the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, we had the, the whole Doctor Strange and Wong uh, aspect in there. Uh, lots of characters that were in this. Uh, we introduced the Black Order to it, which are like the horsemen of the apocalypse, as it were. If Thanos was apocalypse, the Black Order are his horsemen. Uh, so we did get introduced to a few new characters. Uh, I saw one review that said that characters are just dropped and we don't have any backstory. You, we, what, what do you need? They're the children of Thanos. What kind of backstory do you need on them? They're obviously uh, his top generals of sorts and they really did kind of exude that in the film and he calls them his children and all this stuff so it's like i don't understand why you what kind of backstory you need for those um 
So a lot of characters in this, and I was really concerned how they were going to do the screen time. I think they did it in a very smart way, that they were broken up into different groups. Uh, and th there was a lot of kind of subplots in this one movie. And what was nice about it was they were all connected by this string of Thanos kind of going through and collecting these stories or these stones the movie really was a thanos movie for the most part uh that and then the other ones were subplots so you had uh the avengers who are now broken up if you remember so you have iron man doing his thing you have captain america uh black widow falcon uh vision there are uh, um, um scarlet witch you know they're all for doing their thing you have uh, Spider-Man kind of doing his thing. Uh, you have Iron Man, you have Vision, I mean, you have War Machine, all of these characters, you know, they're broken up into different sections and they basically stay that way through the course of the movie. They come together towards the end of it, but not all of them. And I think that's what's ultimately going to be necessary to beat Thanos. Uh, we'll get into more of that later on. Uh, even the Guardians of the Galaxy split up. Uh, we do see that Thor survives the battle. Uh, he's floating around in space. The Guardians of the Galaxy meet him. And then from that point, uh, him, uh, Dr not Drax, uh, him, Rocket, Groot, him, Rocket, and Groot are, they split up into their own thing as Thor realizes that he needs his hammer. Uh, Mjolnir is gone, and I kind of wish, I feel like they did a, a, a disservice to to Thor in the fact that Ragnarok really set it up, and Odin even said that. He's like, you're not the god of hammers. And it was, his, it was a tool that was used to hone his powers. And I feel like they took a step back with Thor in that this one, they still made it where he needs to have some kind of weapon. Now, it showed, I mean, it was pretty badass uh, when Stormbreaker was brought into it. And they create Stormbreaker, which is a king's weapon. Uh, and as the king of Asgard, it falls to him. And whomever I would imagine is king of Asgard. Uh, so not necessarily, one thing that I was wondering when I was watching, I was wondering if it's like Mjolnir, where if you're worthy of Mjolnir, uh, you, the, pow the power of Thor is bestowed upon you. I don't know necessarily if that's the same thing with their version of Stormbreaker. Now, mind you, it's different. Stormbreaker was brought into it with Beta Ray Bill, and that's not in here. So there's a little bit different of a continuity going on with, obviously, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the the thing of it is, I don't know if it is tied to any one specific person, like Thor, if you're worthy of it, uh, if anybody can pick it up, uh, if, if it has that infinite weight to it that uh if it doesn't want to be moved it's not going to be moved um or if it's just like i said tied to whoever is the king of asgard uh, th there's no explanation really to that other than the explanation that it's a king's weapon which worked i guess but um they go off to create that and then like i said then thor comes out and he's badass in it um so i really feel like Honestly, while I liked it, I feel like they took a step back with that character development. Uh, kind of like Iron Man in the fact that Iron Man, Tony Stark, is not his suit. Uh, that without his suit, he feels like he's nothing. And that was one of the main reasons why he got rid of the arc reactor in his chest. Because there's more to him than that. And I feel like uh, they kind of did the opposite of that with Thor by giving him his weapon back. In hindsight, as I said, he turned out to be pretty badass, which I don't mind. Uh, through the whole process of things, uh, we are, again, shown the, the gravitas of what's happening. We see Doctor Strange uh, and Wong talking. We see Bruce Banner, who the last act of Heimdall before he is killed is to send Bruce Banner, Hulk, back to Earth. Why... Heimdall wouldn't choose to send the king of Asgard, his king, and pr to protect him. Why he would choose not to send him back to Earth 
is a little bit of a mystery to me. Uh, I don't, you know, other than, you know, just trying to make us think that uh, Thor was killed. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I would imagine that they would have, it would have made more sense for Heimdall to want to save his best friend. I don't know. Uh, but once that happens and you see, and it really did hearken to the old comics of Silver Surfer. When Silver Surfer went to Earth and was like blasted in there with Doctor Strange. Uh, and he's like, Thanos is coming. And Doctor Strange is like, who? And then the title sequence pops up. Uh, I love that we see Iron Man and Pepper Potts uh, finally together. I liked seeing Gwyneth Paltrow in that again. I loved seeing her in Homecoming. I loved seeing her back in this. It's a nice little, uh, because it's not necessarily an Iron Man story, so it's nice to see that she's sprinkled in. I did appreciate that. Would have liked to have seen Happy Hogan. Uh, that would have been cool. I always like seeing Happy, but Happy was very prominent in uh, Homecoming, so I'm okay with that. But uh, then... Then the then it was an interesting thing where uh, Doctor Strange goes to Tony Stark and says something's happened, and and he's like and Tony's like kind of caught off guard and it's not until he see sees Bruce Banner show up, surprisingly, uh, and then Bruce is so traumatized that he just goes and hugs Tony and you like I said you can feel a sense of urgency with it and they like i said from the very beginning they hit the ball or they, they hit the ground running with this movie uh from the very beginning and it picks up from there again where the uh the black order comes to challenge dr strange to take the infinity stone that is the time stone uh so we have that and uh, there, there's there's a play on it in the in the comics and in a lot of cartoons. It's the infinity or the the eye of Agamotto has to be given. Uh, you have to freely give it to somebody. Instead, uh, Doctor Strange puts a spell on it that it can't be taken off of his person. Uh, and they definitely do uh, have a battle to have it taken off. And you see, just New York again gets messed up. Enter Spider Man. Spider-Man goes to try to save the day. You have now Iron Man. You have Bruce Banner. You have Spider-Man. You have Doctor Strange. You have Wong. They're all battling. Uh, I'm. I was really very impressed with uh, Doctor Strange in this film. Uh, I liked seeing he him evolve as the Sorcerer Supreme and utilizing a lot of his powers. Uh, they didn't really serve him all that well uh, at the end of the day. Uh, just Thanos was far too powerful for him, but I liked seeing that he had more of a understanding of what and how to use the the the, the mystic arts. Um, and through the whole, through the whole thing, everybody kind of gets separated. They go to the big flying donut, uh, and as Iron Man says, and now you have Doctor Strange who is captured taken into the flying donut and they're going off to thanos uh the infinity stone still as part of the eye of agamotto is still around his neck not able to be removed and they're trying to get it off of him that separates iron man and uh spider-man uh and they're going off uh, which will eventually they'll eventually be going to titan which is where uh, they're they're trying to take all the stones that Thanos wants them to get capture the stones and then meet him at, meet him on Titan. Through that whole process again, they're off doing their thing. You have now uh, the, the the Guardians of the Galaxy who have come across Thor uh, floating around in space. Uh, Thor is introduced to Tree and Rabbit, and, <laughs> and they go off and they do their thing. Like I said, to create a new weapon, a uh, Thanos killing weapon. In the process of that, you now have Star Lord, you have Drax, you have Gomora, you have Mantis that are now. Uh, what did they end up having to do? Um, oh, they were they were going to nowhere. They they decided they needed to get the uh, Reality Stone, which was in the hands of the Collector. 
So Thor sent him off to do that while he was going off to create a new uh, Thanos killing weapon. When we get there, and th again, that was a really good scene. I love seeing the interaction between Thor and Star-Lord. Uh, absolutely hilarious. One thing I always say is for the first half of this movie, I was laughing considerably. There was a lot of humor in it. Uh, not too bad. I thought Ragnarok was a little bit too goofy and a little bit too humorous. Uh, this had a nice blend of humor in it. And one thing that I did like was with, with like the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, James Gunn has created a different kind of feel for the Guardians and that resonated, I felt. Uh, instantly when we're reintroduced to them, the old music, it was uh, Rubber Band Man. Was, you know, the cl a classic type of song is playing. They're all sitting there. They're jiving and everything. And uh, they're on their way to what later they would discover would be the battle between Thanos and the Asgardian ship, uh, which is then how they come across Thor. They, uh, you know, so, I mean, in, in keeping with the spirit of each individual team and character and stuff, I thought that they did a really good job with it. Uh, same thing with like the introduction introduction of Spider-Man. He's he's there on a school bus, which it fits perfectly for that style. When um, so when everybody kind of splits up, that's when we then see uh, the evolution of the relationship between Vision and Scarlet Witch as their feelings are becoming more and more. Explored upon, you know, they're exploring upon it, and they're realizing that they really do care about each other. And then they're shocked uh, by the uh, emergence of, and I'm so terrible with the names of the the Black Order, uh, the the one guy with the giant axe thing, which apparently that axe is able to cut through anything when it's in his hands. He is able to use that to cut through anything. Nothing can stop that kind of thing and that's how he was able to stab vision which again another <gasps> moment uh totally another surprise moment and the you you see the evolution again of the powers of black uh or not black black i was gonna say black widow of scarlet witch how she's getting more and more used to him she's protecting vision uh vision is battling and at the end they're about to succumb to i think her name's proxima midnight so you got the two black order characters attacking vision and scarlet witch and that's when we get the reintroduction of captain america black widow and falcon who have been on the run for the past couple years and you can see it uh the especially in cap who now has like a full-on beard he's wearing the same outfit that he basically wore in civil war but it's much more tattered much dirtier the star has been ripped off it seems uh, I, I need to go back and see if that was damaged in the fight with uh tony um because i don't necessarily uh remember that uh the other thing uh, rewinding a little bit in the battle with uh, dr strange and spider-man and iron man and uh whatever the dude's name is he kind of looked like uh the Crypt Keeper? I'm just going to call him the Crypt Keeper. Uh, we're introduced to the Mark 50 Iron Man suit. Woo! Uses nanotechnology. So this is absolutely, I mean, this is as close as we are going to get to um, the Extremis suit. Uh, using the Extremis technology and being able to use the nanotech where he controls it basically with his mind. And it just... You know, the, the chest thing, it houses the nanotech and it his thoughts create whatever he needs. So whether it be wings on his back or a hammer, uh, a giant hammer on his fist or a gun on his, you know, whatever the case may be, we're introduced to that as well as the iron spider suit, which does have the extra arms. Absolutely brilliant. I'm so happy that they brought these types of things out for this epic battle. I mean, they needed to have that, right? So uh, so now we're, re re we're reunited with uh, Captain America and everybody's 
you know, the, everybody else is doing their thing. Captain America, he decides to go back home. And that's when they kind of become aware of what's happening. And they need to figure out how to get this stone in Vision destroyed. They, they come to the conclusion that if you destroy it, Thanos can't get it. And it's a, it's a noble plan. Makes sense to do. And in that, they uh, decide to go to Wakanda. And we're reintroduced again to the Black Panther. We're reintroduced to Shuri, who is, for all intent and purposes, smarter than Bruce Banner and Tony Stark. And you, you get that sense when uh, she, she's like, why didn't you just do, you know, she's like, there's all these neurons. Why didn't you just do it this way? And Bruce Banner is like, because we didn't think of doing it that way. And she's like, oh, I'm sure you tried your best. And I love seeing that. I love seeing her be uh, as successful and intelligent. And if you got those three minds together, I think that it would be an amazing sort of thing. Uh, so they're doing that. We're reunited. Uh, well, we are, as well as Captain America, is reunited with... Uh, Bucky, uh, the Winter Soldier, who gets an all-new arm. Apparently, his mind is healed. That was an end credit scene in Black Panther that they were working on it, and they were able to uh, erase all this stuff that Hydra put in there. That's fantastic. Um, so they're doing their thing, and they're trying to figure out a way to get that stone out. In the meantime, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy being Gamora, Drax... Star-Lord, Mantis, they go to nowhere to confront the Collector, who they've come to discover has already been visited by Thanos. There's a little bit of a trickery going on as we discover that Thanos gets a hold of the Reality Stone. So now he's got two of these. Oh, I, I apologize. I should go back even further. Loki, <laughs> actually, we, we saw this. Loki had the Tesseract. And in it was the Space Stone, who he did get. So now he's got the Power Stone. He's got the Space Stone, who Thor even says he's like, he now is already the most powerful being in the universe with just those two stones. He gets now the Reality Stone from the Collector. So now he's got three of the six necessary to complete his life's work. And through the battle process, uh... Or, or, or leading up to this, Gamora tells Star Lord that in case Thanos gets her, Star Lord has to promise she makes him swear on his mother that he will kill her, that she knows something that Thanos doesn't. And at that point, it didn't click in my mind, but then when I watched it the second time, I'm like, it was right there, you know, that she knew where the Soul Stone was. And he had sent, Thanos had sent Gamora to find the Soul Stone. Um, he now controls reality where Star-Lord is about to kill Gamora and his blast turns into bubbles and Thanos is like, I like him. And then takes Gamora and they disappear and they go back uh, to his wherever. Through that... Or after that, we're, we're then we, we go back to uh, Iron Man with uh, Doctor Strange. They are trying to figure out what to do. They're in the big flying donut that's flying back to Titan. Uh, basically for no purpose other than to get the, the, the time stone, as I said. And they uh, the, the Crypt Keeper guy is defeated fairly easily. I, I would say by the combination of Spider-Man, Tony, and Doctor Strange, I think those I think all three of those work really well together. Uh, Doctor Strange again, very powerful. Iron Man with his new suit is very resilient and uh, able to come back pretty much from anything. We see that later on. Uh, so they 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 handle uh, Crypt Keeper. Fairly well, I would say. But now they're stuck in this big giant flying donut and they don't know how to get back home. And it seems to be already on autopilot taking them back to Titan. So they have to deal with that. Uh, 
changing gears over to uh, back over to the Gamora situation, uh, it is then revealed that Thanos sent Gamora to find the Soul Stone. She says that she failed, she wasn't able to, and Thanos calls her out and says, you know, I, everything that you can do, you are the best at it because I taught you, but you are a bad liar because I didn't teach you that. And she's apparently caught lying. And because he already knows that Nebula snuck on the ship to try to kill him, almost succeeded, and then recorded a conversation with her and Gamora. And Nebula, Nebula's like, we, we know what he's doing. He's going to get all the stones. And she's like, Gamora's like, it's not going to happen because I found the map to the soul stone and I destroyed it. So nobody ever knows where it's going to be except for me. That's the only person. And Thanos knows it. So he again threatens to kill Nebula. All these characters seem to just be like, oh, somebody's going to die. The whole universe, you know, you're playing on that emotion. And it's a tough call. And he's torturing Nebula. And Gamora succumbs and tells him where the Soul Stone is. It's on a whole other planet. Vormir, I think it is. I, I, I think I don't remember. So he's like, show me. And then they go there. After that, we uh, were visited, or we visit uh, Thano or Thor again. I keep looking over at my hot toys to try to keep the different stories in. Uh, Thor has now gone to, and I can't say the name for this one, but the mystical place where Mjolnir was created, the the heart of a dying star where the dwarves are. He gets there with Groot and Rocket, and it's discovered that Thanos went there and decimated all of the dwarves except for one. Uh, Peter Dinklage is there. And it's hilarious that he's a dwarf in real life and he's a dwarf in the movie, but dwarves in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are huge. So it's, it's like, Peter, we're going to make you a dwarf in this movie. Uh, I don't know, but you're going to be bigger than everybody else. Okay, I'm on board. So he's he's one of the dwarves that created uh, Mjolnir. And Thor's like, we need you to create an another weapon. And that's when they discovered that he was used by Thanos to create the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, something powerful enough to withstand all the power of all the different stones. And I think that will come into play later on uh the mold is there still rocket discovers it and i think that will come into play later on we're not sure what we, we're, we don't even know what the title of the next movie is going to be so everything's speculation but i think we need to keep our eyes on that um and the everything is turned off the heart of the die heart of a dying star is uh cold the rings aren't moving nothing is working and Thor has to jumpstart it. And with working with Rocket, even almost to the point of sacrificing his own life by holding open the iris to allow the power of that sun to come through and melt the metal necessary to create Stormbreaker, it's done. And, uh, I mean, there was another funny scene. I, I'm going to get the where He's like, you know, Thor, you're going to have the full force of a sun on you it's going to kill you and he's like not if i or he is like not if i don't or he's like so, but something like like not if i don't die and he's like well that's what killing you is it was a funny thing uh again like i said lots of humor in it and through it it, it melts the metal he holds it open long enough thor is again shown as being uh, an absolute immense power in the in this universe stormbreaker is created but there is no handle there's no handle and peter dinklage is looking for a handle there's no handle uh so groot takes it upon himself to use his own arm to bring the two halves together and so the handle of stormbreaker is groot's arm which again we have seen toys that have done a little bit of spoiling and we saw that with this uh we we saw stormbreaker and we saw what looked to be like a tree 
for an arm. And everyone's like, well, that's got to be Groot. So a little bit of a spoiler in, in the release of the toys. Uh, so Stormbreaker is created. Then we go back to Wakanda, where the big giant army of uh, the Black Order is there. Uh, uh, Black Panther, the big, you know, they're like, you know, something's entering the atmosphere. Uh, they're all there. And they're like, we need to protect Vision. So you keep Wanda, you stay with Vision, you protect him. When that stone is out of his head, you destroy it. We're going to go and hold all these people off. So everybody goes out there. And this is this comes to the part where literally, uh, again, uh, toys had spoiled this. I think it was Lego that kind of spoiled this. We see Bruce Banner running around in the Hulkbuster. And this is, this is of all the, everything else in the movie, this is the one thing that stuck out in my mind that, I didn't like because I didn't understand it. Why was the Hulkbuster in Wakanda? If I remember correctly, in Homecoming, the Hulkbuster was loaded up onto a ship that was gonna on a, on a jet that was gonna go up to upstate New York for the new Avenger facility. That plane, that son, you know, crashed. But I would imagine they still would have moved all this stuff up to upstate New York for the you know to house all of Tony's stuff, and it's. You know, in looking at, at like Hot Toys and things like that, it's the version two. It's it's a more two version of the Hulkbuster. So it's an updated version of the Hulkbuster. So why does Wakanda have an updated version of the Hulkbuster there? Um, didn't make any sense to me, and it was just there. Now, that being said, we have seen trailers that showed uh, Bruce Banner with like the arm of the Hulkbuster right there. So maybe there's a deleted scene that we'll get that'll explain why the Hulkbuster is there. I'm really hoping that there is um, because that leaves my brain a little bit crazy. Uh, but through the whole process, we see, and this, this is what I was talking about, we see a recurring theme later on. After Hulk was beat to a pulp by uh, Thanos, the Hulk didn't want to come out. Perform, call it performing anxiety. I don't know. But uh, twice, I want to say two or three times, uh, Bruce tried to pull out the Hulk. And the Hulk straight up was like, no! And then would win, and then like sucked back in. Like, Bruce couldn't control him. So Hulk was, and everyone's like, you know, well, they turned Hulk into a big giant wussy. No, I, I don't, I don't, I don't feel that way i feel that hulk was n never afraid of something and he's afraid of thanos which to me is a very powerful statement that hulk is afraid of something i mean that's amazing to me that somebody who is, shouldn't be afraid of anything is terrified and does not want to come out to face him again. So Bruce Banner hops inside the Hulkbuster. Why it's there, I have no idea. And he's trying to control it, and he messes it up. They all go out to face the Black Order. Now, we come to another very <gasps> kind of moment scene. Two kind of <gasps> moment scenes, very close to each other. Thanos and Gamora are are on Vormir. Again, I, I think that's the name of it. And they're approaching this mountain where they're met by this ghostly figure. This figure's talking about the Soul Stone and how other people come to him and it's his duty to uh, take them to the Soul Stone. But it bears a heavy, heavy cost to be able to have the Soul Stone. Now, like I said, right now, the Power Stone, the Space Stone, Space Stone, and the Reality Stone are all in his possession. And, and that's a little bit loose. Now they're going after the Soul Stone. The Soul Stone, uh, in some prequel comics, was actually described by Wong to Doctor Strange as basically being the most powerful of the stones. It literally changes... It can literally change the soul of a person. If you're a good soul, if you have a good spirit, uh, you're not going to do anything bad. You and, and a lot of people thought that that was going to play into this, and they didn't really uh, develop that very much in it. 
But the the Soul Stone was described as being in order to get it, you have to really sacrifice something. Thanos says that he's willing to pay the price. And it's then that we we discover that this ghostly figure is none other than the red skull. Not Hugo Weaving. I don't know who it is. But the Red Skull is back. All the way back in Captain America, the first Avenger. He held on to the Space Stone. And it zapped him. People thought that he died. I didn't. I, for the long time, I knew he didn't die. I knew he didn't die. It's Red Skull. It zapped him to Vormir. Where he was basically the guardian of it. Leading people to the Soul Stone. To see if they had what it takes to be able to take it. And that that was a <gasps> moment. Uh, big reveal. That was amazing to see. And I'm seeing a lot of people that want to get the Hot Toy Red Skull figure again now. When he goes up to it, he says, he explains that the Soul Stone, in order to possess it, you have to give, you have to sacrifice something. You have to sacrifice a soul or a soul. Something that you love must be sacrificed and this is where gamora thinks she's all smug she's like ha, ha. The, the universe basically tells you no you've wanted something for so long and now you can't have it because you don't love anything or anyone well thanos is sitting there and he realized that he brought something with him that he does love deeply in fact and that being Gamora. And he turned, he starts crying, and Gamora again being smug. She's like, oh, tears? Really? Oh, come on. Because she thinks that he's sad because he's not going to be able to get the soul stone. And that's one, a very fun line, very, very powerful line when Red Skull is like, the tears are not for him. And that's when she realizes, like, oh, shit. She's like, no, this isn't love. You don't love me. And the reality is he does. He cares very deeply for her. He grabs her arm, walks to the edge of a cliff, and throws her over it. She falls to her death. And Thanos, it blasts, and he wakes up with the soul stone in his hand. He sacrificed his own not even really his daughter, uh, because they're not genetically related or anything, but very, very powerful scene to see that he was that committed to his cause that he ended his daughter's life. So now, he in his possession has the power, the space, reality, and the soul stone. Echo set off its lights to 100%. Okay. My lights were dimming. So now that just leaves the time stone and the mind stone. And all you people that watched my review of this saying that this isn't the mind stone. You were wrong. I've wanted to do this for a while. And I'm going to. You were wrong. You were wrong. Anyhow. Uh, so now we go... Back to Tony Stark. Tony Stark, Iron Man. Uh, it, through this whole process, the Guardians of the Galaxy, with Star-Lord, Drax, um, uh, Mantis... They meet up with, um, meet up on Titan. And that's because Nebula knew that Thanos was going there. And she escaped and then sent a message to Mantis that said, you need to go to Titan. So they all go to Titan. And they reunite, well not reunite, but they meet Iron Man. They meet Spider-Man. They meet Doctor Strange. And these are the ones that are going to have basically a full-on battle with Thor, or Thanos. And it was an amazing, amazing battle. 
uh, epic, I would say. Iron Man really showed just how powerful he is in my mind. I'm I'm Team Iron Man all day long, and the 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 new suit he has really held up against Thanos for a very long time. You also see how very powerful Doctor Strange is, but also how powerful Thanos is. There's a whole scene where uh, basically Doctor Strange decides to try to put him in the mirror universe, and where we all know from Doctor Strange that the mirror universe doesn't affect the real world around you. So he tried to trap him in the mirror universe. That was that whole thing where like he like sent out like a wave of stuff, and it was coming, and then everything you know and then like Thanos har like harnessed it and then tried to redirect it back and then all of a sudden it all turned to butterflies and that's because that was they were in the mirror universe and it was all different there and Thanos was powerful enough to escape and destroy the little prison that he was in and come out of it so that when I saw that that was another <gasps> kind of moment like that's how powerful he was with Four of the six stones. I keep referencing this. Um, finally, they start coming together and beating him. And they're trying to pull the Infinity Gauntlet off of his arm. They almost have it. And then Star-Lord shows up. And Star-Lord wants to know where Gamora is. And this is when Mantis, who is now on top of him, who's making him try to sleep... Uh, you know, she's holding him in check, and Thanos is like, uh, basically tell, you know, and she's like, you know, he's in mourning, and Star-Lord's like, tell me you didn't do it, and Thanos is like, I had to, and Nebula's off in the background being like, they went to, they went to Vormir, they came, he came back with the Soul Stone. Gamora's not here. Star-Lord goes apeshit. Starts beating him in the face. And because of it, basically wakes him up, knocks everybody down. And they start epically fighting against Star-Lord. Screwed the whole thing up. Uh, Iron Man is then basically confronted by Thanos. And Thanos is basically now at this point whooping his ass. Uh, to the point where... This was, this almost got me. This is like, <gasps> I was like that for a while. Iron Man turns around, <laughs> makes a sword type of thing. He goes to smash it. Thanos grabs it, <laughs> breaks it off, turns it around. <laughs> and Tony Stark, right into him. And this is when I'm thinking, this is it. This is who's going to die. I mean, other people have died. But a lot of people were thinking, like, is it going to be Iron Man? Is it going to be Captain America? I'm like, this is it. It's Iron Man. He's going he's gonna to die. And that's when Doctor Strange... Now, this harkens to something that happened earlier. They were sitting there trying to formulate a plan. And in the process, Dr. Strange was off in the corner utilizing the time stone, like in a little trance kind of thing. And Mantis says, does your friend do this all the time? He's like, kind of, doing all this weird stuff. He had gone into the future and he saw over 14 million different outcomes for it. And said, I went into the future, I saw all this. And Tony's like, how many of those did we win? And Doctor Strange says, one. One instance out of 14 million, they won. And as, now fast forward back to what we're, to the battle. Iron Man is about to die. It's just a matter of just having Thanos like push that blade in there further. And Doctor Strange stops him. Says, I will give you the time stone if you spare Tony's life Thanos says no tricks and 
then the stone is given. At this point, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, wait a minute. Something's not right about this. This is where me, I think ahead, and I'm thinking that one instance where Thanos is defeated was predicated on this, that Tony needs to be alive to be able to do this, to be able to beat Thanos. And Doctor Strange sacrificed the stone so that Tony would stay alive. And Tony just looks at him and was like, why would you do that? But I think that Doctor Strange has a plan for it. Had a plan. Because now he's got five. Five of the six. He decides to go after the Mind Stone. Without much fight, he transfers himself to Earth, to Wakanda. He battles very easily and just kind of shrugs him off. Everybody. War Machine. Falcon. Winter Soldier. Black Panther. Captain America. Tries to fight him. That amazing scene where he's holding back the punch. And then Thanos just comes around with his other hand and knocks him to the ground. Goes up to Vision. Who's laying there. Scarlet Witch is also there. That ma an amazing scene between those two, Vision and Scarlet Witch. Where Vision's like, you need to do this. You need to destroy it. And she's like, no, destroying it will kill you. And Vision's like, at this point in time, it doesn't matter anymore. I think my camera's falling. Like, at this point in time, it doesn't matter. We've run out of time. You need to do this. And says some amazing lines that you could never hurt me and these are powerful lines there's love there absolutely and it was amazing she reluctantly agrees and starts to try to destroy it holding off Thanos with one hand trying to destroy the stone with the other finally the stone snaps and you think that it's all done. Except. Thanos. Has the time stone. And he's able to. Reverse time. Take his little hand. time then goes up re returns everything to where it was vision is back and he goes up and literally grabs it on his head and pulls it out destroying his head in the process he puts it on and in the process of all this battling in Wakanda, Thor arrived. Thor, again, immensely powerful now with the Stormbreaker. I, every, all three times that I saw the movie, when Thor arrives, the crowd erupted. And Thor's there battling, and he's the last one to go up to Thanos. He sits there, he throws the Stormbreaker. It's not stopping. Thor's, or Thanos is blasting it with his glove and it's not stopping. So I'm thinking that this thing is pretty powerful. Smashes into the chest of Thanos. Thor gets there. He digs it in and he's like, I told you. You're dead for that. Killing his brother. And that's when Thanos says, You should have went for the head. Snaps his fingers. The deed is done. Half of the population of the universe. Galaxy. Decimated. 
That was his whole goal, and he achieved it. Cementing him as one of the most badass villains in the whole universe. People say how Killmonger was a good villain. Yeah, well, he was a good villain. Thanos achieved his goal. And we start to see the effects of that. Black Panther. Falcon. I could just look at my shirt. Black Panther. Falcon. Groot. Gamora's already dead. Star-Lord. Drax. Let's see. Looking at other people. Scarlet Witch. Peter Parker. Witch. As everybody's turning to ash, basically, and just floating away. Peter turns to Tony and is like, I, I don't feel good. I don't I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And, and then he's like, I'm sorry. As if he let down Tony Stark. That was, I about lost it. I, I almost, tears were almost streaming down my face. I was just in such shock. I couldn't believe it. Doctor Strange then turns and says, there was no other way. He had to do it. Earlier it said that we're in the end game. Which, wouldn't that be a good title? Avengers Endgame. Who knows? And we're left with seeing Thanos. Well, I mean, Captain America is sitting there and he's like, oh God. Because he knows that they lost. And we're left with Thanos walking, sitting down in front of a sunset smiling credits roll and we have an end credit scene in addition to everybody else dying Maria Hill dies she's with Nick Fury Nick Fury gets one final thing before he disappears sends out an SOS to Captain Marvel, who, for all intent and purposes, Captain Marvel is basically like a female version of Superman, who is immensely powerful, physically, all that kind of stuff. And that's what's coming out next. Uh, we have Ant-Man coming out in a couple months. Uh, people are like, why were Ant-Man and Hawkeye not there? Well, it's said in the movie that they took a deal with the government to be released because they have family to take care of. So we're going to get Ant-Man here. Um, uh, Kevin Feige has said that uh, Hawkeye is not done. Uh, that there, you know, basically Hawkeye will be there for Avengers four. So um, he's not just being ignored in this. Maybe something happens and that brings him out of retirement. Maybe his wife dies or something. Who knows? He loses his kid. He has nothing left to fight for, so he comes back. Um, I've already been talking for an hour. You guys could have all gone to see the movie. If you have stayed here for this whole time, thank you. Um, this movie, at the end of the day, is as deserving of the hype as any movie that I can think of uh, in, in recent years. It was epic. It was heartbreaking. It was hilarious. It was uh, just everything that I wanted in it. Uh, it. It was a spectacular movie. As I said, the breaking them up into groups, I really felt allowed them to hone in and do a good job telling the stories. Now, interestingly enough, 
Uh, a lot of people got pretty decent amount of screen time, except for Captain America. Uh, Cap didn't get a whole lot of screen time, and he also didn't really say a lot in the movie. Uh, so, I'm really curious uh, what you guys think on that aspect. He, he wasn't... Um, the other scene that, you know, like when Thor revealed... the Another scene that, like, every single time I saw it, the audience erupts is when Captain America is there to save Scarlet Witch and Vision in their first battle with the Black Order. Uh, when he first shows up, I think it's, again, approximately midnight, or somebody throws, like, a spear, and he just, whoosh, whoosh, and he grabs it, turns around, and is like, yeah, I'm here. Um, it's, I mean, I mean, I'm sure that I'm missing a lot of stuff, but I, at the end of the day, this was a very ambitious movie that uh, I feel... They did a great job at connecting all the pieces previously laid out, tying them all together, bringing them all together. Um, and it just worked. You know, by taking Thor, which, because of Ragnarok, kind of made it a little bit more lighthearted and giving putting him with the Guardians of the Galaxy, it fit really nicely. Uh, it was good to see... Doctor Strange and Tony Stark together. That was fantastic to see because both of them have egos. And Tony is like what Doctor Strange was before Doctor Strange got his ego in check. Uh, so it's very interesting to see that dynamic come together. Um, so much was built on this movie. For, for 10 years, there was so much of a foundation that was built on it that it was the payoff was great. Even when you look at something like Age of Ultron, which a lot of people didn't like Age of Ultron, that helped to set a foundation for this to be built on. Uh, you know, introducing Ultron, and that's one thing that uh, Bruce Banner was saying, that we could possibly remove that Mind Stone because... He's more than just that. Vision is more than just that. He's a combination of me, Tony, uh, uh, Jarvis, Ultron, all of these different things, the Mind Stone, all of these different things working together to create them that we could probably remove that and there would still be a lot left of Vision. Maybe even the best parts is what he says. So everything, everything served a purpose in these movies leading up to this. And I feel like it was ultimately a payoff. Uh, now, we are left wondering a few things. How is this world going to look now in Ant-Man? Um, I'm really, I mean, I was excited to see Ant-Man in the first place, but I'm really looking forward to Ant-Man now. What is this world going to be look, looking like when, when we visit uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp? That comes out in a couple. Uh, and then next year, we don't have anything until next year with Captain Marvel. Now, Captain Marvel takes place, from what I know, takes place in the 90s. So we're going to be introduced to Captain Marvel in the past. And this is where the whole end scene with Nick Fury is very important. Because Nick Fury is a man who always had a backup plan. And he created the Avengers to fight the battles that we couldn't. But what about the battles that the Avengers couldn't handle? That's where Captain Marvel comes into play. He, she, um, I almost said he, I apologize. She was the Avengers' backup plan. In case they failed, she's there. So before he disappeared and dies... He gets that SOS out to her. And I'm curious to see. So obviously we're going to be introduced to her in the past. And then it'll probably be a thing much like uh, Captain America. Where we're introduced to him and the story is told from a past perspective. And then it comes to the present. Uh, we also... And then that's it. That's all we have until Avengers 4. So um, I'm really curious where Adam Warlock 
is going to come because we know that he's going to be necessary in beating Thanos. Him and Captain Marvel are the two biggest players in coming together to defeat Thanos. And uh, we don't know what the universe is going to look like. Uh, we do know that we're getting a Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Uh, but beyond that, it's just speculation. Uh they said that they're gonna they're they're developing a Spider-Man two and a three, so Spider-Man might come back. Who knows? Uh, but beyond that, we don't really know anything. There's no more Iron Man movies. There's no Captain America movies. There's no more Thor movies that are being planned. What's gonna happen? All these characters, you know, Captain America, Winter Soldier, all these characters, uh, Falcon, all these characters are dead. Now, yes, granted, the Time Stone can have a play in that but dr strange is dead so who's going to use the time stone to make him come back um who knows what all of this entails uh i mean there there's there's a whole lot that's kind of like how is this going to happen what are we going to do with all of this now we're kind of like left with a how's this going to happen kind of mentality and i think a lot of people are having that they're sitting in their cars and they're like just taking it all in and trying to figure out what it's all going to be about. Um, you know, uh, uh, Adam Warlock is an immensely powerful creature who may be able to fix some things. Uh, I think ultimately it's going, you know, my theory is ultimately it's going to come down to somebody is going to die, possibly sacrifice themselves to bring everybody else back. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards Captain America. Uh, because then that would allow Bucky to take over the, the mantle of Captain America. And that seems like a logical sort of step for them to go into. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but the, everything after Avengers 4 is kind of like speculation on what's going to happen. Like I said, we know that we're getting the Guardians of the Galaxy 3, uh, so something obviously must happen. Everything else, though, is kind of up in the air. Like I said, with the Spider-Man movies, maybe in a Doctor Strange 2 movie, who knows? Um, lots lots of stuff all over the place. So uh, I was immensely impressed with the movie. Immensely impressed. I think that, and there there is no doubt in my mind that the people that are responsible are ever going to see this video, but... It was well done. It was very, very well done. Uh, to the to the extent that the only thing that after seeing it three times, the only thing that bugged me was where the hell did the Hulk Buster come from? Obviously, Hulk is going to have to get things figured out, and we'll see, we'll see that. Uh, maybe have him and Thor tag teaming like we saw Doctor Strange and Spider Man, which was a really cool scene. There's a lot that has to still happen. Uh, and the uh, the fourth Avenger movie is shaping up to be a good one, I think, still. If this first one here is any indication, the, the um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm, you know, you know I mean, the, the bar has been raised. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. I've been talking so long that that fell. Um, the bar has been raised for this movie and I can't see, or I can't wait to see what comes out after this. I'm just super excited. Uh, but that's it guys. I'm going to wrap this up, uh, an hour in almost 10 minutes of talking again. If you watched it, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you for watching guys. Thank you for everything. Uh, you guys have been with me on this journey uh, reviewing the hot toy figures, enjoying Marvel, all this stuff. You've been there with me uh, as a fan. I've been there right there with you as a fan. And uh, I'm, I'm just kind of, I want to see it again. <laughs> Three times wasn't enough. Three times wasn't enough. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you watch this entire video, bless your heart. Thank you so much. Uh, typically speaking, I would say that a way to help support my channel is to watch a video all the way through. I don't know if you guys will be able to with this, but if you did, thank you. 
you get bonus points. And I'll even tell you what, if you send me a message that you watched it all the way through, I'll send you a thank you card. I have some, not these, but I'll send you a thank you card. Send me a message. Let me know in the comments if you made it all the way through. Thumbs up if you made it all the way through. But that's it. Remember, guys, the real trouble with the world is that too many people grow up. Thank you for watching and taking the time to be a kid.